All right, so let's fade out the music. Hey, Cyan. Oh, thank you. They are nice boxes, aren't they? Look at these boxes. This is from an era when games came in massive boxes, like the size of my head. <laughs> we have one for Discworld 1, one for Discworld 2. We're going to be opening up them up in a moment, but just take a moment to appreciate just how nice that art, that artwork is and the like the little like gold shininess of the text. Oh, so nice. <laughs> Go on, let's let's have a let's have a look at it then. So, this is Disco One. The art goes all the way around the box, which is really nice. And there's actual artistic effort put into marketing. I know. Look at this. That look. That one looks. That one looks so good on the shelf. Like the shiny text. Oh, catch a glint of it every time I walk past. You know. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Let's see if we can meet the system requirements. Can we, can we meet these system requirements? Uh, let's let that focus. So we need 100% IBM PC compatible, 386 or higher. I can probably about manage that, maybe. Uh, a CD-ROM drive. Oh, there. No. <laughs> That's where I'm going to actually struggle, because I don't have a CD-ROM drive in my PC at the moment. <laughs> maybe I should have put one in there, but, you know, for now, uh, we don't have one. <laughs> four megabyte, four megabits of RAM. Four million bits of RAM. Four. Whoa. Definitely, that's, that's, that's going to be a tall order, I think. <laughs> uh, 256 color VGA. This is, this is pre-SVGA. This is, this is VGA. Uh, so this is kind of the mid-era of, of DOS. This was released in 1985. Keyboard, most recommended. Yeah, this is, this is entirely possible all keyboard. Um, you just use, like, the arrow keys to move the cursor around and then enter to, uh, to like, interact with things. Uh, general, general MIDI. Here comes the general. <laughs> uh, Sound Blaster, AdLib, or 100% compatible. Wait, Sound Blaster, AdLib, or 100% compatible. I don't understand the grammar in that sentence. There's, the, there's, there's a term there I'm not picking up on. <laughs> oh, is 100% a sound card or something? <laughs> like, I, I, I remember having Sound Blaster... And that seems like everything everything of the era of DOS that I play was like Sound Blaster compatible. <laughs> Arrow keys to move the cursor sounds awful. Man, have you ever tried playing Point and Click Adventures on like the PS1? That's when that's where I that's where I played my first um Point and Click Adventure game. I played like Broken Sword 1. And you literally just use the analog stick. Well, I mean it's the PS era, right? It, PS the PS1 controller didn't even have an analog stick. That would be that would have been in a D-pad to move the uh <laughs> move the cursor around. Do you mash enter when mashing is needed? Presumably. <laughs> there is always mashing to be found. What have we got on the side here? Logos. Signosis. Nothing on the top. Barcode. Alright, what do we got on the back, back of this box then? We have a few images. We have the city gates. Oh, focus, focus. Which way do I go to focus? There we go. Holding this at a really unnatural angle. We have, we, have the, we have the pickpocket scene in the barber shop. We have Jagega, of course. And we have the cockatrice running away. <laughs> That's nice. This one had the dual shot controllers. Uh, oh, yeah, it did. It did, but they weren't the ones that came with it, were they? I probably would have had the dual shot controller. In fact, I, I used to play Ape Escape, and that, those were the ones that required the dual shot controllers. So I must have had one. <laughs> At least Telltale worked out giving you a character control. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the, like, the late era of, uh, <laughs> of, of the PS1. All right, you'll find here wizards, dragons, heroes, and household hygiene specialists. There is danger here, but there is also custard around the place. There is danger, but there is also custard. <laughs> There's a game called Discworld Noir. Yeah, the Discworld Noir. Discworld Noir is the third Discworld point and click game. It does not have Rinse Wind. Um, I will play it on stream at some point. Getting it to run is a nightmare. Um, so I've not managed to do it yet. <laughs> but I'm working on it. 
Because Discworld is a fantasy world with a low reality threshold, the real world keeps on breaking through, but Discworld changes it. So you'll find here things you sort of recognise. <laughs> Welcome to Mindes' stream, where you'll find here things that you sort of recognise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, hello everybody, by the way. Hello Onion, hello Cyan, hello Zanon, and hello Bimo. <laughs> Discworld has got photography, Tinyum's paid the pictures, and movies, Tinyum's paid really fast. And it's even getting its second generation of computers now the old stone circles don't work fast enough. However, because it is a fantasy world, there are some things that it has to have, and one of them is a certain tendency to experience some trouble with dragons. Unfortunately, a dragon is now ravaging Ankh-Morpork, the world's leading city. Many people will consider that this falls under the heading of civic improvement, but what Ankh-Morpork really needs right now is a hero. All it's got, however, is Rincewind and the wizard. Oh, they spell wizard correctly! Rincewind's not a wizard, he's a wizard. <laughs> totally different thing. Whose only talent is that he is not, in fact, dead yet. He also has the luggage, the nastiest piece of travelware in the universe. He's not the nastiest piece of travelware, he's a good boy. With that aside, there is probably no limit to the things he can fail to do. Oh, did he say he? I meant you. Beware of anyone who talks like this and carries a scythe. And remember that a loaded pun sometimes goes off. We got Terry Pratchett's signature. <laughs> Curse you, Edwards. Hey, Lackers, how's it going? <laughs> We're having a look at Discworld 1. Voiceovers by Eric Idle, Tony Robinson, John Pertwee, and Kate Robbins. Wait, there's only... F They've not put Rob Brydon in the... They've not put Rob Brydon on the box! <laughs> Rob Brydon does, like, 60% of the voices! I guess this is a time before Rob Brydon was known. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> and this is 1995. I'm assuming that this is going to be the original version of the game, not director's cut. Uh, and of course, for, for ages 11 up, according to Elspa, whoever Elspa is, I'm sure they have the authority to decide that kind of thing. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and open it and see what's inside. I've not actually opened it yet. It arrived, and I have been waiting to share this moment with you all. Watch it now be empty. <laughs> In the interest of conservation, this inner cartridge is produced from recycled biodegradable material. Good. Nice to be eco-friendly. All right, what do we have inside? Ooh. Oh, I recognize this booklet. Okay. So first up, CD. Nice little uh, jewel case. The colours on the CD look a little bit washed out. I see that's just how it came though. Let's have a look at it. Yep, no, no scratches, no, no visible scratches. That's good. <laughs> and here is the instruction manual. Look at this thing! This thing's beautiful! And, and huge, by the way. <laughs> a concise and possibly even accurate guide to playing the game. Kvantikani Kvala Ila in Fenestra. I don't know what that means. I'm sure it's a Discworld thing. <laughs> but yeah, this has got like loads of stuff in it. Uh, okay, that's standard safety stuff. Property of Unseen University. Oh, it's like a library book. Of course. We have a foreword. Which is the same thing that was written on the back. We have like an index. It's got loads of like lore on like the Discworld. So much content before you even get to the game. I know, right? Like what the Discworld is. Basic geography, magic, gods. Ankh Morpork, the Patrician, all the guilds. Thieves Guild, Beggars Guild, Assassin's Guild, Alchemist Guild, Fool's Guild, City Watch, Races. Like, there's so much, like, lore in here. Like, <laughs> we're 14 pages in and it's just been lore before we even get to insert the CD. <laughs> How much is that small dog in the window? Excellent. Excellent. Perfect. Yes, that's exactly what it says. <laughs> that's, that's the perfect Discworld saying. You can use the mouse. That mouse there. 
Specifically that one. <laughs> Man, this is really cool. Interacting with tags. So they've called the, the labels tags. There's the keyboard. It, it's similar to the keyboard I've got, but, you know. Um, uh, in fact, it's pretty much the same, I think. I think, it's, I think it's the same keyboard. Yeah, same keyboard. The space bar literally has planets because it's space. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the level of, uh, that's the level of intellectual comedy we're dealing with here. <laughs> Oh my god, what else does it have? All the other oh the, the other keys they're all locks. I don't know if you can see that. They're all like locks. Instead of keys. I don't know what's going on with that picture, honestly. <laughs> oh, we've got small ads in the back as well. This is literally just like law stuff, I think. Yeah. Senior public servant requires apprentice. Free board and large producer company horse. Make lots of new and interesting acquaintances, I'll be at short term. Experience with the side will be advantageous. Death wants an apprentice! <laughs> Wanted for grievous bodily harm. Suspect reported to resemble metal bound chest on little legs. Approach with extreme caution. It may be packing. <sighs> it's a pun. Sponsor a god. Give belief so they may grow. Daily prayer will make a god more aware. Enter into our lottery draw. First prize is three smitings of your choice. Second prize, a plague. Pick your favourite disease. Third prize, a rain shower. Location of your own cho choosing. Experience believers only, please. <laughs> I am lost. Please help. Contact me here. I'll wait. <laughs> uh, and then we got adverts for... Adverts for books. Adverts for figures. And then the actual credits. There's Rob Brydon. There he is. He can't escape. <laughs> so yeah, this is just, this is just like so much, like so much information. I remember having this on the shelf as a kid. I'm really, I'm really glad I've uh, got another one. It's just full of so much information. Really nice pictures as well. At least he is credited. Yeah, he's definitely credited. Just not on the box itself. I guess there must be a time before he was before he was known. <laughs> the before times. The times before would I lie to you? Um, we got a postcard we can send off. Heck yeah. Thank you for buying our product in order to help us maintain future quality and keep you and your retailer informed of new products. Please complete and return this questionnaire. Heck yeah, I'm going to do that right after this stream. Definitely. Probably not. <laughs> what else do we have in here? Oh. This is a walkthrough. This is a walkthrough for the first game. That, that would not have come with it. Because, like, literally the, the game is just a ploy to sell the, uh, <laughs> to sell the <laughs> strategy guide. I assume this is something that the people that I bought it off put in there. That's a nice little, like, walkthrough, though. Uh, we we kind of skip half of it, but uh, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's definitely a uh, definitely a, a walkthrough. It goes all the way to the end. Starts with open wardrobe, pick up pouch. And ends with love custard on dragon, yeah. Ah, huh, neat. Uh, yeah, I assume that that was put in by the, the people that I that I bought the game off. I, I got it on eBay, so uh, it was not you know brand new or anything. And that is Discworld One. So I do I do at some point want to find some hardware that can actually run this. Um, because it would be nice to to play the game authentically. So I might have to see if I can find like a. Mid to late end uh, DOS machine. Something with like Windows 95 or something. <laughs> does the strategy guide have your skip in it? It does not. We're actually not 100% sure if the skip is possible on hardware. Um, that's the next thing I need to test. Because obviously the, the quick save quick load glitch is not possible on hardware. Uh, but we need to check about the... Um, the... 
uh, Mambo skip. Jack 3 skip, I guess. And then we have Discworld 2, Missing Presumed. Again, with nice, nice like, silver font this time. Silver text. Silvery, shiny text. And Rincewind riding on Binky. Still with luggage. Everything looking a little bit more, uh... Well, he, he, his, his clothes don't look as frilly as they do in the game. I don't really understand what was happening with the art direction in, in like, the actual game of Discworld 2. This, like, this, this is clearly the same art style. With that weird Rincewind face. But the actual, like, in-game art style for Discworld 2 is a very, very weird direction. And I don't really understand it. Uh... But hey-ho, there we go. Oh, what are the system requirements for this one? Okay, we've got system requirements. It's, it's a little bit more uh, higher requirements than the, than the first game. We need a 486DX4 100 megahertz or greater IBM compatible computer. Uh, recommended Pentium 90 megahertz or greater. 90 megahertz, Jesus. <laughs> uh, 16 megabytes of RAM for Windows 95. Or 8 megabytes of RAM for MS-DOS. Oh, this one never actually mentioned an operating system, actually. I don't think. It just has PC-CD. It doesn't actually mention, like, DOS or anything on it. That's interesting. I guess that was all that was really around, though, so... 640 by 480, 256 color SVGA. So move, So this is, this is the SVGA era now. At 480p. Double speed CD-ROM drive. Double speed! Amazing. Sound card and amplified speakers or headphones. I could probably about manage the headphones. <laughs> I know, 640 by 480, it's, it's so many pixels! So many pixels. What, what uh, screenshots do we have here? So we've got the introductory cutscene. I think that's also from the introductory cutscene. The death one. Uh, that's in Jelly Baby. That's at the movie set, and that's just that's at the hill near Jelly Baby. But nothing around Ankh Morpork really. Interesting. But those are, those are quite late game pictures to be getting, honestly. Oh, this is a this is a uh, <laughs> this is a hot game. Heck yeah, this game's on fire. What's that? Created for Microsoft Windows ninety five. Hot game. <laughs> Again, eleven up. Voiceovers by Eric Idle, Nigel Planer, Kate Robbins, and Rob Brydon. He's on the box. They put him on the box. <laughs> this is—he's—he's he's got his fame from the first game, and now he's on the box. This is the second Discworld game. What do you mean I haven't finished the first one yet? Good grief! Some people look. Give the proofs to the fishmonger. Give the dra get the dragon to breathe on the mirror. Throw the black monk to the crocodiles and shoot the dragon with the other dragon, or just you know skip Act Three. <laughs> And turning the same item five times. <laughs> Done that? Good. Now if everyone's caught up. This is the second Discworld game. Death has gone missing. A hero is needed to bring him back. But there's only Rincewind, incompetent wizard and highly trained coward. You won't catch Rincewind running away. He's too fast. Unfortunately, he's all there is that stands between people and the horrible prospect of immortality. No one wants that, do they? We've made Discworld 2 a little easier, Snigger. With lots of new locations and even prettier graphics and sounds. As Death himself says, have fun. A magical world which goes through space on the back of a turtle, as everyone should know by now. And we got Terry Pratchett's signature. Nice. Uh, I assume, like, the company's, the company's the same, isn't it? So it's Psygnosis. Perfect 10. Oh, Perfect 10. Yeah, Perfect Entertainment. TWG not part of, uh, not part of Discworld 2. I don't know what role they had in the first game, but, yeah. Either way. Uh, Alright, I think that's everything we're going to get from the outside of the box. Let's go ahead and open this one up. Is this one also similarly eco-friendly? It certainly is. Nice. <laughs> All right, we got the game itself. This time we've got a insert for the game. I don't know if the other one was supposed to have an insert, but this one has got an insert. Uh, on the back, it just says the same thing that it does on the back of the, the box. And yeah, this is a multi-disc multi game. This one's two-disc, two-disca. It's got the dual case that uh, that opens up to two two sections. 
And what do we have from this manual then? Discworld 2 Missing Presumed. What does that say? Tempus, Tempus Fugit? Non Timetis Messor? I really should have, uh, should have looked up some Latin phrases before I started this stream, clearly. <laughs> Alright, what do we have? We have all the safety stuff, copyright, warranty, forward, which again is the same thing that's on the back of the box. But very nice art this time. Look at luggage! Look at the good, look at the cute boy! He's got teeth! He's got many teeth! And very realistic looking feet! Ew! <laughs> I don't know if I like that. <laughs> and again, we've got we're opening up with a load of lore, background, introduction, finding your way around, uh, population of the disc world. Uh, yeah, Ankh Morpork University, the clickies, that tower that is unseen university. It has grown since the first game. <laughs> Uh, death job. Hey, a librarian. I assume that's one of the wizards. I don't know which wizard carried a crossbow around. Maybe the Arch Chancellor. That seems like his kind of thing. Books, candles, very dribbly candles. Excellent. The best kind of the best kind of candles. <laughs> uh, the the actual instructions themselves. <laughs> Chances are. That if you own a mouse, you know how to operate it. However, since it would be tragic for you to wake up one morning and have forgotten how to use a mouse, we have included instructions. That is so thoughtful of you, game. I'm very happy. <laughs> more instructions, more instructions. Uh, customer support line. <laughs> Internet help dot line at signosis.co.uk. I'm sure we can... Uh, Email them and get a response. <laughs> and then the credits, which go over four pages now. Which is a lot more pages than, uh, than the previous game did. What do we have at the back here? The Unseen University's Questionable Taxonomy of Animals. If you should encounter a strange animal during your travels around the Discworld, do not panic. The following questions will enable you to identify even the most unusual entities. Oh, it's like a flowchart. It's like a choose-your-own-adventure flowchart for identifying creatures. <laughs> so we've got shadowing lemmas, a point three oh three bookworm, the fastest insect on the disc, an ambiguous puzuma, a, a vermin, a vermine, an inflatable mongoose. I want an inflatable mongoose. A uh, hermit elephant, ram top sheep. <laughs> oh, there's more. Quantum weather butterfly. Quantum weather butterfly! That was in the, in the first game! An insect capable of altering the weather a distance by flapping its wings and capable of defeating even the cockiest game players almost single-handedly. <laughs> so that that's the one puzzle in the game that is, like, notorious for not making sense. I love it. The 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 proper the proper sassing the the game the player already. <laughs> Is it to take photos? A pointless albatross. A lankra suicide thrush. A scalby and a lappet faced warrior. And yeah, G N U Terry Pratchett. It is a real it is a real shame. Uh, oh, we've got, we got a t-shirt offer here. <gasps> We're pleased to offer two Discworld designs. We can get some t-shirts. They're available in two sizes and two colours. T-shirts at £11 each, plus posting and packaging. I'm going to order them immediately. <laughs> Do not send cash through the post. Okay. Understood. All right, we'll get we'll get us we'll get ourselves some uh, some t-shirts. We have more. Oh, we have like an advert for prints here. This is just all the merch. <laughs> more Terry Pratchett books. Oh, those are the the that's the uh, the death figurine again. But yeah, like there's so much lore in the in these things. 
it's just really interesting. Like, this is probably the era where, like, you get a load of story in the game itself, but you can you can find out a lot more about the world, even stuff that's not in the game, just by reading the instruction manual. It is good. Oh, what do we have here? So, you've thrown the brick at the ghost, given the exoplasm to Misty's cake, and stirred the broth with the troll's tail. And it still didn't work. Stirred the broth with the troll's tail? That's not a thing. <laughs> Ring the helpline number where someone who failed to gain a place at the Rinsman School of Hints and Tips due to gross competence is just dying to take your call. So that's a helpline. Uh, do not call that number. It is a premium rate number. So um, don't call it. I'm not responsible for any phone bills. Uh, we have another like questionnaire thing. Which I'll definitely fill in. And we have a mail order... Like, book thing. I remember these. So we can, we can order some We can order some books at very reasonable prices, question mark. Including the Discworld 1 official strategy guide. <laughs> but not the Discworld 2 official strategy guide. That was later. So, this, so that's really cool. I, uh, I enjoy going through... Like, I remember... I genuinely remember having these manuals. Because we, we used to have, like, a... A whole shelf of just, like, game manuals. And they're... They're freaking beautiful. <laughs> like, they really are. It's just it's just nice. It, it just looks nice. But these boxes really are the, the main... Uh, the main bit of beauty on this. They all look really good on the shelf, which is exactly where I intend to put them. As I say, I do want to try and get some... Uh, some hardware onto which the onto which I can actually run this game at some point, but uh, for now, unfortunately, I, I'm not able to play the games. But at least I own two very, very pretty uh, collector's items. <laughs> Are they collector's items? I don't know, but they're pretty nonetheless. <laughs> so thank you everybody for joining me on this on this little. Voyage of Nostalgia. The Discord and Discord 2. And yes, there was a Discord Noir. Um, I don't know if it came in the same side box. I don't remember it coming in the same side box. But that is a, a the third Discworld point and click adventure game. Which I do... I, I need to kind of see if I can get running. Because that's the one we've not played on stream yet. And... Unfortunately, it is just a little bit of a pain in the ass to get running. Uh, so... I've just not managed to do it yet. <laughs> 